Well, hello. <laughs> Here we are in our first week of Intro to New Testament at the Ministry Training Program of Phillips Theological Seminary. Again, so excited to get to spend this time with you. Uh, I don't know, when I was working on the syllabus, I thought, woohoo, we're going to just jump right on in there, but realized, you know, we really need to take care of a few dynamics or to look at a few dynamics before we start reading or I'm sure rereading these uh, verses, these chapters that are here in this New Testament. So it's really important that we think about the context. Uh, who, who was the intended audience of these writings? Or more accurately, who were the attended, uh, intended audiences? W who, what did they look like? Where were they located? What kind of, um, uh, what kind of, dilemmas were they working with that helps us to understand then the things like the gospels what were what situations were they they speaking to it's why we have these different viewpoints it's why some gospels have some stories that other gospels don't have it's why john is so different than the synoptic gospels it's why we are able to read passages uh, like those that deal with women and, and women's roles in churches. And we read one piece in one of Paul's letters, but not in other letters by Paul. It's because they were writing to these audiences, these intended audience. But then you get uh, some of Paul's letters that, that are cyclical. They're, they're meant to be uh, moved around to be shared congregation by congregation. And so now those contexts look a little bit different. So your readings this week are talking about context. They're talking about what's happening politically and socially and economically, what those issues are, what people have to celebrate. But then our questions ask us, or the question this week, our content question asks us to say, what were some of the similarities? What are the similarities between uh, budding Christianity somewhat 2,000 years ago and where we are today? What did the wor world look like then and today that's similar? And what about differences? That helps us then to see how and what we can apply to us. Now, as a lover of scripture, I want us to be able to apply all of it to us. And I think that we can, but again, how we apply it is so important to look at it within its context, because quite honestly, we are abusing and misusing a lot of scripture for our own devices, for uh, our own reasons that we need to really explore and be honest about. All right, so there's your content question. We're going to jump right in this week as well with that reflection question, uh, that devotional question, if you will. What did you read in scripture that attacked you, that confused you, that uh, excites you, that scares you? I want you to sit with that. Uh, again, New Testament scripture not one that you read for Bible study, Bible uh, teaching preparation, or for, for uh, sermon preparation. That question is for your own devotional reading. Now, if you didn't read anything from the New Testament last week for devotional reading, fess up. Just be honest about it. That's all you need to do. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with your, your classmates. I, I like to, uh, always to see where we are at the beginning, to see how we've grown. And goodness knows what we can grow into and what we will grow into over the next eight weeks. Pay attention to the notes there on the discussion forum because there are so many of us. I have placed you into four cohorts. Uh, some of those may expand if we have more students register. Some of them may contract if uh, we lose students. I know even as of last night, we had gained a student and lost a student. So you're, you may see some fluidity within your cohort. My intention is to leave these cohorts pretty much the same unless I start to see, if you will, some disparity, if if I'm seeing a need to, to shift one or two of you. I won't do that midweek, I promise, but I, I, I may have to. 
I, I don't know. Just want to give you the heads up there. Uh, let's see. What else do I need you to know? Okay. So uh, when I've posted your questions uh, within your cohort, right? So you have your overall, say, your content question, and then I've placed it within your uh, cohorts. Only tap reply within your cohort. So you'll see my post is first, then you to reply, your initial reply will be the reply to mine. When you, uh, when you reply, you interact with your classmates, you'll reply to their actual, actual posts. I know that this is different than many professors. I know that many of, uh, of us we say, okay, every time you respond to that question, do this, this, and that. What this is going to look more along the lines of is a blog, and it's so much easier to track what's happening within in the questions. So let's see. As always, if you have questions, you can call me 573 3550 three five five zero five five four it's in your syllabus and um, uh, you can email me chris k-r-i-s at effective church dot com all right i'm going to see you on those discussion posts and boards <laughs> let's try again i'm going to see you on the discussion boards i'm really excited and can't wait thanks see you later bye-bye